An application of Faraday's law of induction is the idea of a generator, which we use to make electrical power in our home. A generator converts mechanical energy of motion into electrical energy. This occurs by taking a magnet, and it shows like, like the one shown in this picture, where the north, there's a north sole and a, a south pole, and inside of that magnet causing a coil of wire to spin. In the magnet, there's a magnetic field that always points from the north pole to the south pole. When the loop of wire spins inside of this coil, inside of this magnet, then the area vector that represents the surface area of that loop of wire and also the direction that it's pointing starts to rotate around. So if we envision which direction the area vector would point, it always points in, the, in a plane like of a circle, but the, the rotation of this area vector sweeps around like this with a pivoting around the point in the middle. When we think about the concept of magnetic flux, magnetic flux is the dot product of the magnetic field into the area. And although the, neither the magnitude nor of the B field nor the magnitude of the area is changing, the dot product changes because the angle between them changes. Remember that the dot product is given by the product of the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. If the angle theta changes over time, then the, the dot product will change and that will make the flux change. Let us suppose that this angle at which the, the area vector is located is changing uniformly by some angular speed. So if we say theta is a velocity times time, where this represents angular velocity, omega is now not in units of meters per second, but in units of radians per second, and is equal to 2 pi times the period of rotation, theta changes because there's a time dependence inside of that cosine for the, for the flux. Faraday's law says that there's a voltage in a circuit every time the flux is varying, and that voltage is given by the derivative of the flux. As a result of there being a voltage then, there will be a current in the circuit. This is a small handheld generator. It can be used to generate electrical current in a circuit. Actually, it's originally my daughter's science fair project, but it's the same kind of principle as what you find in a power plant. This generator consists of very few parts. It has a large number of coils of copper wire, so this copper wire is just simply wound around the back and around the side here about a thousand times, and that copper wire, that copper wire right there, is connected to a light bulb just so you'll know when there's a current flowing in the circuit. Now, there's no battery in this circuit, so what do we have in place of a battery? Well, it turns out there's a magnet located, whoops, right there. It gets got, it's just jammed my paper clip in place. Um, it's a really strong magnet, and uh, that magnet is connected to a gear. So if I turn this little uh, knob over here to the side, you notice that it makes this very big gear move which then makes the small gear move even faster. So that gear box is just there to make the magnet flip really, really quickly, even if I don't work very hard. So this little generator consists of nothing more than a magnet sitting inside of a coil of wire on a gear shaft, and the, there's, that's all the moving parts there are. So the interesting thing to show you then is when I start turning this magnet really fast, notice what happens to the light bulb. It's lit up. It's not that I'm playing and pretending there's a battery. Uh, there, there is no battery in this picture. It's just that moving magnet. And the only thing that creates that current is moving the magnet faster and faster. What's really happening? Remember that this magnet has a north pole and a south pole. And depending on which end is facing down inside the coil of wire, the magnetic flux through the coil of wire is either into the page or out of the page, or you know, up toward you or down into the, the table. And so by spinning it around very, very fast, I am changing the magnetic flux. And this as I change the magnetic flux, then by Faraday's law, that's going to create a voltage in this coil of wire. And if the voltage gets big enough, it creates a current that's big enough that you can actually see it in the, in the light bulb. At a power company, 
when they want to send you electrical power, all they have is a big steam-powered turbine, which means a very big version of this little knob over here on the side, with not fingers to move it, but rather a steam, a steam engine that makes magnets move inside of giant coils of wire. And they're not bigger or round necessarily, they're mostly more and more coils. And that generates a lot of voltage that then gets you know, farmed down out uh, to, to houses all around the city. The origins of, of how we generate electrical energy is just this process that Faraday discovered a long time ago. We can convert, convert mechanical energy, the energy of motion, into electrical energy, the energy that you know, is the thing that makes current flow around in a circuit. Every form of power generation that we have ma made looks something like a, the turbine I just showed you. In the case of wind power, the mechanical motion comes from wind blowing on a set of fan blades or, or uh, propeller blades. That rotational motion is then translated down a shaft, and although there are lots of parts labeled in this diagram, the key parts to take notice of are items 7 and 8. Item 7 is a set of coils of wire wrapped around this, this turbine. Item 8 is a set of magnets. Everything else in this picture is just to support the rotation of those coils of wire inside of the magnets. So you have a propeller, a shaft, a gearbox, much like in our little Lego set, a big gear and a small gear to make this thing spin very fast, even if the wind speed isn't that big. And those coils are inside of that magnet turning around, meaning that there will be a changing flux. So wind energy is nothing more than a, a, an effort to harness the mechanical motion of wind and convert it into electrical energy. In the case of a coal-fired steam plant, there is a form of mechanical energy being created. First we take something like coal, which has a lot of chemical potential energy in it, burn it, and heat up a reservoir of water. As the water heats up, it converts to steam. And that steam starts turning a set of propeller blades called a turbine, much like in the wind-powered uh, uh, fan. As the turbine turns, then it turns a generator, which is again a set of coils inside of a magnet. And all we have then is again a mechanical motion of that spin being converted into electrical energy. The only difference between this and wind power is the source of the wind. In this case, it's steam created from the combustion of coal. As a byproduct, we also get all the, combu the combustion exhaust from the burning of the coal, but the central part of this, as far as the electrical energy is concerned, is the steam. The same principle of electrical generation through Faraday's law applies in a hydroelectric plant. In a hydroelectric plant, one takes gravitational potential energy of all the water behind a dam and allows the water to then acquire kinetic energy. You open a, a, a chute in the, van, in the dam and it starts turning a turbine, a fan blade. And that turbine then makes a generator move. The generator, again, is a set of coils inside of a magnet. Every single generator then looks something like either a set of coils inside of a magnet and the coils rotate, <clears throat> or a magnet inside of a giant coil and the magnet rotates. Either way, they're attempting to change the flux inside of a, a, a circuit by having the orientation of a coil of wire rotate relative to a magnetic field. Now it can be that these things are really quite big. And if you see in this picture uh, the size of this, there's a person standing next to one turbine. And what's happening is this is the size of the coils that are spinning along some axis down here. And you can get a sense of just how big these packages of coils are during their assembly. When we talk about commercial scale applications of Faraday's law, the size of things gets very, very big. But always, it goes back to the same physical principle of Faraday's law of induction.